welcome to Is This Good, the show where we boldly, conclusively, and scientifically decide what things in this big, wide world are good. I'm Matt Austin, and with me, as always, is production powerhouse Jason Doyle. Hello. Hey, JD. And she's an actress. She's a stand-up. She's a musician. She shined on the Emmy Award-winning TV series Glow. She was the main dish on Netflix's Best Leftovers Ever. And she brought harmony to Amazon Prime's kids show, Do Ray and Me. It's Jackie Tone. Jackie, welcome to Is This Good? Why, thank you so much for having me. I really like that intro. Maybe I'll steal it for like my own, like copy paste. And when people ask me for a bio, I'll just give them that. Yeah, let's let's see that on your IMDb. She brought harmony. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so Jackie, thank you for being here and not going to the audition that you got last minute. You uh, you were like, hey, can you do the pod? And I, this is my thing. Now that everything is like self-tape, you can kind of work around it. But there's a couple in person ones now. And they only come up when someone's like, hey, could you do my pod at 10 a.m.? And I always say, <laughs> unless I get an audition, and I did. But then I couldn't go anyway because I'm out of town when it shoots. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't need to tell us that. I thought you, you were choosing us over the no, audition. No, you didn't. And, <laughs> what, if it, what if this was a big thing? What if their AT&T was like, you know what, Lily? Scram. We're tired of you. We need Jackie Tone in here. Then I would not go out of town. Yeah, I mean – that to me just to like be a barmaid in a Lay's like I was like it's I don't oh, okay <laughs> like, I love doing commercials they're so fun they're so easy they can be but are rarely lucrative I and mean, it's cool it's it's a good so many people so many actors don't like to do them I love them yeah well for, first of all I, I don't see you as a Lay's I see you as more of a premium kettle chip I think you mm-hmm. should hold out for that and I thank you but I honestly I when it comes to commercials I like. Uh, what the successful ones are. So we love a kettle chip. We love, we love like a sort of, not that a kettle chip is rogue. Everybody knows them, but they're not paying you like Lay's is paying you. That's right. That's right. Miss, Miss Vicky's doesn't have the deep pockets of, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Miss of Vicky's big ruffle. delicious jalapeno. Oh, one of the only can't jalapeno, stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. But one can't of the only stop. jalapenos I can do, cause I am famously an enormous pussy. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. well, we might, we might get to that. Please do. Um, so, You've been a lifer in the acting game. As I said off the top, you played Melrose on the beloved series Glow on Netflix. Uh, that was with Allison Brie and Betty Gilpin. You hosted Best Leftovers Ever, which was a big hit on Netflix. I saw it in the top 10 uh, when it came out. Um, you host, you created a kid show for Amazon Prime. I was looking at your IMDb. You've been on episodes of The Sopranos. You've been on <laughs> It's Always Sunny. You've been on The Good Place. But I have to say, this is the one thing that caught my eye. You were on American Idol? Listen, uh, no apologies or excuses. I went on American Idol. So I have been in this business for a long time. And when I was 28, which is so funny that you age out of American Idol at 28, but (laughs) I was like, oh, it's my last year. My acting career wasn't doing shit. My music career wasn't doing shit. I was just like trying anything. And I just look, I ran, it was such a whim. I was definitely not one of those people that like every year I was waiting in line and I was just just like, never going to do American Idol. And then I was back East and the auditions were going to be at the IZOD Center in Jersey. And I was like... Let's go. And me and my best friend went. He just came for emotional support. And it just was like wrapped in a bow. It was like an enchanted experience until it wasn't and I immediately got sent home. But until that moment, it really was weird. It was like we were driving around. Like we pulled after the audition of the 18,000 people in the IZOD Center, we just got wristbands day one. Then day two, you go back and there's like some order. So I drive my buddy back to his house. And there's a camera crew parked in front of his house and they're shooting like B-roll. And as an actor, I like know exactly what's happening. There's a camera coming out of the top of the van. So I figure they're shooting, they're fucking gorilla stealing shots while they're driving or whatever. And um, I was like, what are you guys making? And they were like, oh, we're we're B-cam for American Idol. And I was like, what? I don't know if I've ever told this story actually. And I was like, I just came from there. And they were like, well, I mean, I feel like... Part of me sort of felt like, oh, if I told this story, people would be like, oh, you just got lucky. But I I did. We saw this crew and I was like, what do you guys, 
what are you guys doing? And they were like, Idol. And I was like, I just came from there. And I had my album on me because I just made a record. <laughs> and I was like, here, check it out. Because I obviously brought it to American Idol in case I saw anybody. I was like 28. And I was like, here, listen to my album. And I started doing bits with the people. And they were like our age. And they were like fun. This girl came. I was like, this is great. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And the girl was like, I know it's going to be a lot of people, but we'll be around with the cameras. Like, find us. Or if you see people with the cameras, ask where I am. And I'm like, okay. So then the next day, they put a green sticker on me. And the green sticker means, like, keep an eye on this person. Mm-hmm. So that by the time I got to finally sing in front of someone, they had already had an awareness of me. Mm. Right, what right, are, right. What are the odds? Kismet. I mean, one, one time um, a van with cameras on top uh, came by my house and I got excited, but it was just the then you Google had to Street View. It was just That's Google right. Street View. <laughs> um, I know I'm, I'm like 12 to 15 years late in terms of cultural relevancy on this question, but when I found out you were on American Idol, I found a clip of you. You're singing a um, little less conversation, the uh, late, made me sing. late period Elvis hit. Okay, but here's my question. What was it like getting roasted by Simon Cowell because so you sing everyone's very complimentary you're 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 joking with Randy Jackson about borrowing his pants Paula Abdul is into it and then Simon I I I was angry for you listening to this little (laughs) prick rip into you he really is a prick but you know what's interesting about it it was like Simon was so amazing to me the whole time they all were like paula got on leno and they were like who are your favorite contestants and she's like i'm not allowed to say and then looks at the camera and mouths jackie tone that's just a real thing that happened so i was like oh whoa this is like this is like going well this is wild and then i don't even think simon like really bashed my performance he more was like that was too high energy and a little clowny and like why are you wearing that outfit but he wasn't like you sing poorly or you perform poorly. He was more just like really coming for like my energy and my look, which was super weird because I was like, this is a singing competition. But um, the flip side of all of that is like, and of course now this is so many years behind me, but for years I was like actually in my guts so mad about it. Yeah, no fucking and, kidding. I'm mad well, about it. I'm well, going to carry it around with me. <laughs> you as well, you should. But the thing was like, they made me sing that. And so now they're like, what, what's with that song selection? And I'm on stage going, it's that weird thing. And this is a little crazy. Like you're defending, I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't liken it to this, but like you're defending the person who hurts you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Where I was just like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want this to get worse. And then for me to say like, you guys fucking pick this. Are you out of your minds? I gave them like, uh, Steven Tyler and Pink and, um, All these cool songs. They wouldn't let me play my guitar. They wouldn't let me do anything. And because I was the person that season who was like the funny character person, they were like, you'll open the whole season and like come out with a bang with big energy. And someone years prior had had done this song and they killed with it. And I was like, I don't even know the song. But the Fat Boy Slim (laughs) version... You're just, you're just reading the lyrics like karaoke. It's the first 100%. time you've heard it. You get like to the ball. bridge, you're like, uh, what? What's going on here? There's a ball just jumping from lyric to lyric. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't ideal, but it was weird because it was ideal until that exact moment. But I think they like, you know, they obviously can't fix it, but they can have the judges say whatever they want to make America, to lean America in a certain way. Yeah, for sure. Well, and if I had it to do it again, I I wouldn't say that I was already a musician and entertainer, right? Like, on you'd American be like, Idol, oh my god, I don't know. I was just singing in the shower, and then my friend heard me. I just work at the bank in Tuscaloosa, <laughs> and it's like that's what's so hot to American Idol people. But yeah. then, like, cut to the Voice now, and it's like ninety percent of those people that are on the Voice have like. Well, I don't know about ninety, but a huge percentage of the people on the Voice have record deals that aren't going anywhere. Right. And so they put them on the voice in the hopes that like that will spike it. And they're all like, yeah, I'm just a musician trying to make it. And America's like, oh, they're just a musician trying to make it. And I'm like, boy, was that not the case when I was doing yeah. AI. <laughs> when I was doing not the film, with the Steven Spielberg film, the AI? Steven Spielberg film, <laughs> Idol, AI. I would just, I, I think for me, the, the biggest regret would be like, like a Seinfeld jerk store thing where Simon roasts me. And then I'm like, for the rest of my life going, Oh fuck. Why didn't I say that? Why didn't I say this? Why didn't I say that? Well, you know, 
Totally. But the flip side is like, it never goes well for the people who, who clap back. Yeah, because you can't get past the rapier sharp wit of Simon Cowell. <laughs> well, just see, exactly. Can you imagine? He's really <laughs> such a fucking dolt. But you really can't. It doesn't. You, you don't look good. It's like if you come back. I, exactly. No, you look defensive. No one, you're yeah, you're no better to just smile and, and yeah. walk off. All right. Well, fuck you, Simon Cowell. But <laughs> before we start the show, a quick bit of housekeeping. If you have topics for a future show, email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe on YouTube and review us on your podcasting apps. And while you're at it, tell a friend or family member about the show. Why? Because inside each one of you, there is an influencer waiting to get out. <laughs> and this could be your first foray. Jackie, I'm sure you're going to tell everyone, uh, all your everyone. family members, once you're on the show. You so know, the premise yeah. is very simple, Jackie. I'm going to give you a topic. You tell me if it's good. You ready to go? Yeah, I mean, this is my dream. Okay, perfect. Here we go. First topic, push presents. Are they good? So let me just say for people that don't know, because... I don't know. Push presents? Well, I sent you the topics before, Jackie. You could have asked me before. <laughs> what was I going to do? Google them all? Like Google push presents? Like this is so much more fun. That's what I had to do. Oh, so you want me to just say, okay, well then great. I was going to explain it <laughs> you anyway. You were just going to say for the people that don't know. And so I was just being- Yeah, I didn't realize you were one of the people that didn't know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Push presents is so common. Everybody but me knows. I've never heard the term in my life. Jackie, it, I had never heard it either until I started These are acting like push email. presents is this thing we all know. JD, what is this? I, yeah, exactly. Well, when, right. I, when I explain it, I think you're, you'll, you'll know, Jackie. But it's, it's, it's in the ether. It's bubbling up. I'm, I am a little bit surprised. But basically, here's what it is. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a gift given by one's partner to a new mom for pushing out a baby. So you <laughs> get pre Yes, Jackie. If you're listening, Jackie is making a face like... She could smell a fart through the internet. <laughs> like I could smell the baby being pushed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So push, part of the push present is pushing the baby out. And the present is getting rewarded for pushing the baby out. Now, I, like this has been, I don't think it was a very common term pre, say, 2010-ish. But like most things, it blew up because Kim Kardashian was talking about it. She got a, I wrote this down. What did she get? She got, she, she wrote before she, she uh, gave birth. She said, this pregnancy, I would love a Lorraine Schwartz diamond choker, like the ones I've worn before to the art and film gala. I don't know. Do you know what a Lorraine, Lorraine Schwartz ch diamond choker is? No. Am I a dick for not Googling that too? No. Well, that you didn't know. That you didn't know. Do you think she's um, part of the F.A. of Schwartz empire or do you think this is a separate uh, I think jewelry. there's, listen, there's not that many of us left on the planet, but there, but of the few that are remaining, there are many, the, the percentage of Schwartz's is high. It's a, so it's, it's, a big, so it's hard Schwartz's. to say if they were, I don't think they're part of the FAO Schwartz empire. Okay. So gut reaction, push present, you're repulsed. I, yeah, I am repulsed, but I will say <laughs> this. I like the idea, I think it's really nice. Like instead of only getting the baby presents, the mom is going through such unimaginable. It really wasn't until my like mid thirties, I really was hearing from girlfriends, like what they go through giving birth. Cause up mm -hmm. until then, like, you know, obviously I'm putting like, it's hard. It's, but you're not hearing from friends about like, I don't mean, do we go into it? The tearing, the re-sewing, yeah. mm -hmm. the diapers, the bleeding, the not being able to pee on your own, the obviously not being able to have sex for ages. I mean, it's what this does to your body is not something really people talk about. And so to get a gift for that kind of feels like nice. I mean, whatever Kim is saying is sort of makes me roll my eyes, but not in general. Well, yes, in general, but I mean specifically what she said here about the Lorraine Schwartz gift. Um, so I think it's like, okay, but then... Does it become a thing? Because when I heard the term push presents, I initially thought it was like a present that you like have to get someone that you don't want to get someone, but you're like kind of forced to. That's what yeah. I assume the term meant, which is actually, <laughs> which is what I what, thought was going to be fun to discuss, but it's not going to be. <laughs> um, but so I just we like, take this anywhere you want to take it. Oh, great, great, great. I can't help it. Um, but I, I think it's like fine, but I think like once someone starts like a push present registry, I'm fucking out. Well, like, so I think it's just, it's just in a, to be heteronormative for a second in a male, female relationship or partnership, it would be the woman giving birth and her husband or partner, or whatever, buying the present for her. So I don't okay. think it's a, you start a registry 
you're getting one gift. That's why Kim had to be so specific about what she wanted. Also, doesn't she not have her children? Don't other people have her children? Which, by the way, I, I do not I, judge, but I'm at all surrogacy. God bless. It's incredible. That's yeah, crazy. when I said you could take this anywhere you wanted, I don't know. I didn't know we were going to get into a debate about surrogacy. <laughs> well, but... I'm just saying. No, I, I just want to say. I just wanted to be clear. I'm not judging surrogacy at all. I'm just saying it's interesting that she's getting a push present when, like, doesn't. I guess she's had a couple and then not had a couple, or what's the? I think. I think she. I. Do, I'm not an expert, but I think she has had at least some of her children. That just makes me laugh too. That like somebody would be getting a push present, but they use a surrogate is. Chef's right. That that is Absolutely. like that. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. But it's almost treating you like a surrogate because you are paying this. Or I, I guess it's illegal to pay the surrogate, but you're you're certainly paying them. I don't know expenses and things like that. So it's it's just weird. What if I told you, Jackie, that? And hear me out. The child is the gift. <laughs> yeah, like I have to even hear you out on that. Of course. <laughs> Okay, so why do you need a Lorraine yeah. Schwartz joker? Listen, I, I don't think you do. I think that push presents, by and large, I also just think I'm I'm very weird when it comes to presents, and I think that, I already said by and large, I'm going to say it again. By and large, <laughs> it's a thing that just feels like not something you want to do, but something you're obligated to do. And I would much prefer like seeing something for my boyfriend and just getting it for him. Cause I love him not being like, fuck it's Christmas. Yeah. I, um, I had an ex and like the, the gift giving pressure mm. was like, a was like a major point of contention. And then like his parents were incredible gift givers, but I didn't want thousands of dollars of presents from his parents. That sounds crazy, but I didn't. And then it was like, what are my parents going to get him? My parents were Jewish. We didn't care. We were like, hey, happy Hanukkah. We got each other some stuff or didn't. But it wasn't like the ritual of coming down to the tree and everybody has presents. And even now he's like 37 and his, you know, his mom called him the other day and was like, hey, checking in on what's going on for And I'm like, God bless your parents still ask what you want for Christmas. <laughs> must be nice. I mean, that yes, that must be nice, especially – Look, now I'm like, I don't know if I want to get into this, but, you know, I was going to ask you off the top because I did see on Instagram that you had, this is completely unrelated, but you had uh, um, a story of yourself dancing around your home because you had got your first Christmas tree. Because I don't know if people can tell. <laughs> I, I had to laugh even when I was saying that. I don't know if people can tell, Jackie, but you are Jewish. I, I am in the high. Matt, J.D., it's me. I mean, why would I Why would I contribute to those stereotypes? Dital, but I, dital, do, dital, I do dital. regular. Yeah, dital, dital, uh, dital. Um, but yes, I am Jewish, but uh, my boyfriend is not. And we got a little mini Christmas tree and... It was really joyful. In fact, the Jewish star tree topper is in the mail. Not kidding. <laughs> but I wasn't those. I mean, I know you have more things to say. Is it good about? But I wasn't one of those kids, <laughs> the, one of those Jewish kids that was like, oh, everyone has a tree. I want one. I sort of was like, that's not how we do it. And that's okay, okay. why were you so excited then? Because it, it that's what's so interesting. It was so joyful. It yes, looked, I agree. Right? I agree. When I was a kid, I didn't want, but it was like, we put it up and then we put the lights on and we were playing Mariah and it was like, it was a joy. And then he started filming and I was like, great. This is great. Yeah, exactly. Because I think I grew up with mostly non-Jewish people. So did and, everyone. There's again, yeah. not that many of us. <laughs> it's true. Just purely <laughs> ratio based. If you look yeah, at I the mean, demos. Less than, less than 1%. It's hard. And unless you're in Crown Heights, it's hard to grow up around That's only Jews. That's correct. Um, and I would I wouldn't be jealous of like certainly no religious parts of it, and I didn't you know, but I I was jealous that they were all getting like Super Nintendos, and they were like, oh, but you get presents for eight nights, and I was like, I cannot tell you how wrong you are. But we you get, didn't get Super Nintendo. I didn't get shit, Jackie. I had regular Nintendo that we got, and then that's all. <laughs> I was blow. I've been blowing into those cartridges for four for years. 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, because what I will say though is like. I, we didn't have Christmas, but we had presents. Like, See, we, again, we were not I mean, a big like, present family. I, I'm not, and again, neither are we, but we like got stuff. I'm, I don't want to come off by any means like I was deprived. We definitely didn't come from like money, money, but like it was cool. It was all right. Like we, we got stuff. I don't okay. remember as a kid like super wanting for things, which is such a fucking privilege, but I, 
Like I, but I also didn't really want a ton of stuff. I don't know. I think I like, as a kid, you know, you're sort of aware of the family's financial situation, of course. Yeah. And so you just like, I wasn't like, can I have a very expensive thing? I just knew I couldn't. And so I didn't like beg my parents for it and make them feel bad. Yeah. I would, I mean, I would be writing Lorraine Schwartz, Diamond Choker. They would, they would resubmit <laughs> the draft to me, cross out Lorraine Schwartz and write Claire's. And, and write uh, Claire's <laughs> CZ Choker. Let me throw it to someone who already celebrates Christmas. He's not a faker. Your wife has, has, pushed out I'm, so, I'm sorry to use that term but that's what it's called your wife has pushed out two children did yes. you get her every anything and did you ever even think to get her anything no and I, so that's why i was sort of i was d- defensive when i when i heard the definition of push present because i was like ah, i didn't even know i was supposed to get her anything i thought it was the baby and then when it was described <laughs> when i read the wikipedia of push president i thought the first thing that popped in my head and i said this on the no dunks podcast this morning was well like what do you mean like a stick to bite on like uh like civil war style amputation you know what i mean like during the birth like a, a push press push push you know ah uh <laughs> rubbing a little moonshine on her gums <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, but you know, uh, then Trey mentioned that he got his wife a nice pair of slippers from LL Bean, you know, which is, it okay. is, uh, Jackie, you mentioned it's nice. You, you just gave birth and it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a traumatizing experience for most people. Give me, uh, the mother should get something other than the baby. Sure. The baby is fine, but, but you know what? <laughs> the baby is like, oh, it sucks for a year, a full year. It sucks. Most babies suck. Yeah. So, but you know what? It wakes up in me. That same thing I feel about presence in the first place, which is like when your wife gives birth and you want to get her slip, I've got chills and you want to get her slippers and a robe and a fucking blowout and a mani and make her feel good. I love that. Yeah. But then we have to call it push presents and it has to like be this thing you have to do. It's like, yeah. that's when I start going like, just, just shit the baby out and call it a day. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's <laughs> exactly. She, that's you. what a push present makes me think of is, is like, like giving a child a present for that. taking a deuce. I've come to the conclusion that there's only one reasonable push present that you can give, and that is, as a man, and that is to donate a kidney. Because if you want to make the comparison, your wife had something taken out of her, and mm-hmm. she gave life to another being. So you donate a kidney, you get something taken out of you, and it gets donated, and then you give life to someone else. I think anything short of that is, is pointless uh, yeah. and not commensurate with the act of giving birth. <laughs> Although sure, a Lorraine I, I, Schwartz, whatever the fuck that is, sounds like it's kind of close to giving a kidney. Probably costs the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So before the show, um, I poll people on Twitter, Jackie, to see where the pulse of the people is at. Sure. So 69% nice percent nice. of people say push presents are, what What do you think? Did you think they 69% of people said good or not good? Not good. That's correct. Wow. So Interesting. even though they are becoming more of a trend, seems like people... Do not like them. But Jackie, I think before we move to the next topic, if you start act, asking your group of friends, I think you'll find that it's a common thing. Which is interesting, too, because you were saying, like, you know, this probably wasn't that common until 2010. I'm like, it's 22, baby, and I never heard of it. Yeah, every sure. single person I know has had multiple pushes. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. Jason L. asks, using the bathroom with your partner slash spouse in it. Is this good? So I don't think you need an explanation. You don't need a Wikipedia entry for this one, Jackie. Okay, now you're just literally below the belting me. Um, That's rude. Just kidding. Um, This is a very cut and dry one for me. Okay. PPS, poo-poo, no. PPS, poo-poo, no. PPS, poo-poo, no. I mean, I don't generally need someone in the bathroom while I'm peeing, but if, like, someone's shaving or brushing, it's like, I don't care. It's pee. Mm -hmm. It's like we're familiar with each other's fluids in Mm -hmm. all sorts of um, ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Congratulations on the sex. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, No, we piss on each other. Oh, that's great. uh, Yeah, we're into it. And I just think with with, uh, pooing, even like when it's my best girlfriend or something, like I just think this is too much information. Like forget (laughs) not being attracted to someone in that moment or, or like how that like, I just don't. Even if you go into the bathroom after a stranger and it smells like shit, it's just not pleasant mm-hmm. to s- 
Mel, someone, I mean, this is what Jackie with a major in rocket science says, it's just not pleasant to smell someone else's shit. It's just not. And, and that's what you said uh, during your job interview at SpaceX that got you that's the job. Right. And, I, and honestly, they didn't even notice when I also did it at my TED talk. They thought it was new. They thought it was fresh. Do, has your agent uh, been able to get you that TED talk? Yes, yes, yes. And I and all I said, it was very brief. You know, they do is one of the mini Ted's and I said Oh, that's not TEDx. TEDx is not for you, Jackie. Okay, we no, need no, full no, no. TED. Full this was this was a full TED, but it was very brief. And I just said, I don't love smelling other people's shit. And uh, it got a <laughs> lot of views. Controversial statement. All right, JD, agree or disagree. Do you like smelling other people's shit? Uh, definitely not. So. Okay. And I agree with okay. the rule. I agree with, with Jackie's rule. PP yes, poo poo no. The problem is that my wife. Uh, Her pee pee smells like poo poo? <laughs> well, yes, actually. And she never knows what it's going to be until she uh, sits down. You know what I'm saying? Like That is I'm not like, me. I yeah. know why I'm going in there. Yeah. 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 She, it's, it's like she sits down <laughs> and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> And if I'm there, I'm there. And if I'm not, I'm not. But uh, how long have you guys been married? Uh, Twenty years this this January. Oh, that's fucking awesome! And obviously, you were there for the births of how many children? Uh, of two children. That's yeah. incredible. So I think yeah. I think once you watch a woman's body. I was going to say open, but that's so gnarly. Oh, her um, body open. It was a C-section both times. Oh, so no push, no push present. No push then. present for you. Oh, I took it. it back. I took of it course. back, Matt. A C-section <laughs> surprise, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. We, I'm, we didn't get into that on push prezzies, but yeah, it's like, babe, <laughs> come on. Once you get to a, that place in your relationship, I think kind of all bets are off. I still yeah. don't think that'd be something I want to do, but... Oh, I'm not shitting in front of her. Oh, interesting. Never. Right. Never. Oh, it's only going one way. So it's a one way. It's one way. And yeah, I, his, I, yeah his, her poop his, goes his, in. His poop just like, goes well, in. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like you have these knobs in your relationship, like your, your intimacy knob, your trust knob, your vulnerability knob. And you're always like wanting to, to turn up those dials, right? Sure. And so it's like, turn up the dial. And then it's like, okay, peeing with the door open. Okay. Um... <laughs> Peeing with you while you're peeing in the toilet while you're in the shower. And then the knob can go too far. Yes. Yes. And I think I think that if it hits, it's like the love togetherness parts of your relationship wants you to just do everything together, be as close together as possible. But the like the mystery um, passion parts, I think, wants to leave a little bit of, of breathing room. No pun intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's a no from me. P PPS, poo poo, no. Okay. Um, Sixty-one percent of people say using the bathroom with your partner in it is. What do you think? No. Not good. No. I mean, look, it, I, I, it's it was vaguely phrased. Like, I suppose it, you think some people are so uptight that they won't like yes. brush their teeth while their partner's oh, in there. No, but I think some people are so uptight they wouldn't pee. Yeah. Like they just mm -hmm. don't. Also, I think there are some people who have like pee anxiety. So many friends sure. have told me that where they're like, "Oh, I can't even like if you're getting like." blood tests or pee tests they're like oh i can't do it at the lab i have to like take it home and bring it back i'm like i could it's very use, inconvenient wow i could use the bathroom <laughs> in all regards any goddamn where i wow. please wow. well there it is it is true because men are trained to pee in public like i don't just mean like in the forest or something but a urinal I mean, you're right, next right to out everyone. there yeah you're but it's always actually, in a stall it's men who've told me that that they can't pee they have like pee anxiety Oh, and we were at like a gathering and one dude said it, another dude was like, oh yeah, man, me too. And I was like, oh, whoa, wild. Bunch of pussies. All right, next question. <laughs> Sari asks, dating your coworkers, is this good? Jackie, we'll throw it to you on this one. Now your, your work is, is the set. I think it's generally a bad idea, mm -hmm. especially with actors, because then you're off the project and you're on to a new project and it, it could be so intoxicating to like while you're on a thing. Yeah. So, like, so oh. sorry to interrupt, but what the onset romance, I don't know. Why is that such a thing? It. Oh, I did it one time. Um, I hooked up with someone on a movie when I was really, really, when I was really young, like maybe 19, 20, 21 in there. Um, oh, 
I'm trying to think if there's another, but it was never anything like big time where it like continued and we actually dated. It was more just like, oh, this is fun. We hooked up a little and that was like kind of it. Um, so that's you and Michael Imperioli on the set of Sopranos? <laughs> that's right. Okay. So I'm just I'll tell you later. That. It's a fun one. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, it, I, I've just never thought it was a good idea. Also, I'm a person, I'm like... I don't know how to even word this without sounding like a douche, but I'm so insanely like monogamous and into my partner generally that like, I, I'm not a person and I know that's not the question, but like I'm pretty, I'm in a relationship a lot of the time. So then if I'm like on a set, I'm not like, Ooh, who's here that I could, that might be fun. It's like, nah, I just like, this is acting and I want to go home and like, kick it with the person that like I've created a relationship with. Not that like I'm fi feeling fiery toward in this moment. That's bleeding. If that makes sense. That makes sense. But JD, you worked at a ton of restaurants. I'm sure you have Ooh, that's had, fun. had work relationships. Huh. Yeah, a lot. And it was the nineties. So uh, <laughs> <Killer>. <laughs> yeah, there hey, was now. a, there was a lot going on. Uh, and, uh, you know, I ended up, uh, marrying one of them. And, okay. Uh, there you go. Her, so. An office romance success story. Well, yeah. then in that case, you gotta, you gotta say yes to him. I also think, um, in regular jobs, it's a lot more, I don't know, like it, feels like much more feasible or doable because then you're seeing the person every day and then you're continuing but it's like excuse me with movies and tv it's like then the thing generally ends mm -hmm. but any work relationship obviously that's the risk i mean i was thinking of like the big bang theory i don't know why i've never seen that oh show. my god i was thinking of the big bang theory no you weren't just a classic bazinga I hate it. <laughs> so I, um, I've never seen the show in my life, but famously, yeah, no, no, I haven't either. That's but famously, funny. Kaylee Cuoco and Johnny Padalecki, they dated like very seriously, and then broke up and had to like go to work every mm -hmm. day together. And I feel like that sounds like a big enough nightmare to me to not do it in the first place, but you never know who you're going to fall in love with. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say as, as a society, we are never been more down on office romance. Like, I mean, you just Google that and everyone's like, don't do it. It's, um, you know, and obviously there's the power and balancey ones that we know about, like, right. um, you know, your boss, a boss dating someone, or you dating your boss? Like I know Jeffrey Zucker from CNN was fired for dating, uh, a subordinate, a high-ranking subordinate, but a subordinate nonetheless, and they didn't report it to HR. Uh, some Wait, other office you're not allowed. It's what? you can get fired for dating someone at your work if you don't disclose it. Yeah, because then you could show like favoritism to them. Oh, or, fascinating! Yeah. I God, normal jobs. Uh huh. Well, then not yeah. that that's a normal job, but uh huh. Yeah, I have an I have a an HR H, HR course I can send you on YouTube that you can. Uh, take oh, a look I'm at. I'm all set. My YouTube's not working, so I think I'm <laughs> Your YouTube's watch. not working. No, I don't think I'll ever be able to watch that. So. Oh, okay, that's too bad. <laughs> Ultimately, love is more important than work, right? So I think if you think it's going to work out or has a good chance of working out, I think it's probably worth the risk. And is it is it any different than dating someone that's in your friend group, like? That ends, right. that's going to be awkward. But between your work and your friends, like that's the bulk of the people that yeah. you're meeting and Those spending your time with. Those are the people you're hanging with. out with and getting close with and getting a chance to like get to know and vibe with. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard. I once, um, uh, I once dated like a stand up. I mean, I've dated many stand ups, but this yeah, one. I'm sure you is, have. Thank you. But this one guy that I dated, we were in like very similar friend groups. And after it went down, it was like very tough. Very tough. Very tough. So that's you and Gallagher. Just I want to get that. That's one yes. That's too. me and Watermelon. Uh, at, what does he? What does he do? Bludgeon them. Yeah, he, What's yeah. The thing he hits him with a hammer. Hammer. Yeah. Oh, also, sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. Thank just, you so much. He did, also, he did pass recently. He did pass. Also, couldn't think of the word hammer, so you could apologize for that. For that. For I think a mallet. I think it was actually a mallet. mallet a mallet, to be honest. Um, JD, do you have any examples of ones that went disastrously wrong? Oh, literally all of them leading up to my wife went disastrously wrong. But there was a thing about – they were all in restaurants. So I, either I would leave the restaurant or – Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. You would just leave. leave the restaurant. I, I mean uh, I would be so reluctant to get into a work relationship if it was an actual – if I was in an actual job career. you know, Like an like, office where you have yeah. like – you're moving upward and like leaving would – could potentially be like the end of your – 
financial life. Like you'd be exactly. fucked if you were working your way up a corporate ladder and you had to leave because of a relationship and start. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. I mean, and uh, restaurants are awesome because it's all dancers and actresses and comedians and musicians and, you know. Podcasters. Just, po- well, <laughs> there was no podcast back then, but uh, – yeah, it was great. So I'm saying I'm saying good. Like I don't it's not a blanket good obviously. And obviously abusing your power is not good, but if if it's if you think it's going to work, I'd say go for it. But don't you always think it's going to work? That's what I was thinking. No, I think sometimes you're like this could be fun thing. This could be yeah, a, yeah, a drunk yeah. a drunken Christmas right. party hookup. Yeah. Um or but- this would be fun for a bit, and if that's the case, then yeah, don't go for it. I agree. So 59% of people say dating your coworkers is not good. Hmm. Everyone being very negative today. Wow. Uh, next question. Jill asks, requesting a plus one to a wedding. Is this good, Jackie? So you're invited to a wedding. The invitation comes. Your boyfriend's name is not on the invitation. There's no indication inside that he's invited. But you've been dating for a while. Is it okay for you to request an invitation for him? It's very all of these and i guess that's the point of the show but they're they all have gray area and so i see i see no nuance in any of them but that's interesting that you find they're nuanced but continue and well we just talked about all the nuances and the work relationships you fuck but i know i think i think the like it depends if i'm really although if i'm really good friends with the person there's no universe they're inviting me without my boyfriend that I've been with for a year and a half. So like, that's Mm -hmm. not going to happen. But if it does happen or if it's like a random extended family member, I'm sort of like, I don't care if I, if I'm going to know other people that are there, I don't really like, he won't care. I won't care. I don't need him to come. But I guess in the very rare, I don't know. I'm just wondering like, who's doing this? Well, can I, can I tell you a story? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. So this is actually a scenario that, Myself and my girlfriend are going through right now. She was invited to a wedding of a of a very close friend from. How back long have in you and your girlfriend been together? Uh, it's been like eight months, but by the time the wedding is going to be over a year. Okay, but even eight months is significant. Obviously, oh, I, I thank you, Jack. You're, I was just saying, I'm not minimizing that fucking success. Right? I Let's don't go. think it should be minimized. Let's go. Um, so a good friend of hers, she lives in LA now, um, but her friend is back in Atlanta. Had a wedding, sent out the save the date. Just my girlfriend's name on the card. Now, this is a close friend. She knows that we're dating. She knows the timeline. But I, like you, I was like, well, okay, go without me. I, I mean, I'm not going to kick up a fuss about this. Um, and But she was upset. And I was like trying to, trying to throw every excuse to give the benefit of the doubt to the person throughout the wedding. I was like, you know, maybe they're not inviting people that are just dating. Maybe it's just, you know, people that are married. She's like, no, these people are... Well, also, fuck that because a lot of people don't want to get married. So if you're only going on that thing, it's like, no, it's not okay anyway, but go on. Yeah, I agree. And then I was like, well, maybe they don't have room for me. She was like, "Um, the wedding is outdoors. I was like, oh. I was like, maybe they don't have enough food for me. They're like, it's like a potluck buffet. I'm like, what? Okay. So now um, (laughs) now I'm like, it's not an issue of money on their part. It's not an issue of space. Now... The tables turn and I start getting angry and I'm like, I don't care if they don't want me at this wedding. I'm going to this wedding. <laughs> and so finally she, uh, I mean, I'm joking about that. It was more of her that she was kind of offended. So she, she just texted them and said, Hey, you know, can Matt come? I mean, she didn't have to say my boyfriend. They know my name. And they were like, Oh yeah, of course. Huh? So this is a situation in which. I don't know if it worked out. But how was it? I mean, if the answer is like, oh my God, yes, that suggests it was an oversight. And then you go, how was it an oversight? They know your girlfriend well and know that she's had a boyfriend for eight months. Oh, this 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 is an interesting one. Okay. How is it not automatic plus one for literally everybody? Well, you, you can't do that because some people like... You know, I, I mean, I was single for a while, and when I would be invited to a wedding, I would just be invited, me alone. Same. Because if they give you a plus one, then you... But then why? But they, they don't... Because they don't want you to bring, like, a date, like a random... Not a random stranger, but just someone you're... 
this is your second date and you're bringing them to a wedding or I want to bring a friend to feel more comfortable. I mean, fuck out of here. You can meet someone at the wedding. And there, therefore, then you're not paying. Also, I was going to say, it's very expensive to have. I mean, obviously, you exactly. better than me, JD. You're married. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, but, but, that's why, but that's why you that's why you RSVP. And you say plus one. You invite plus one. And you say, thank you very much. It'll just be me. Or, yes, I will bring my friend JD, who loves weddings. You know? Uh, I think, it, un- unless the, the people are in a somewhat serious relationship, you don't need to give a plus one. I... I, I, I tend to agree with you, Matt. I think that especially if like, if like a lot of your friend group is single and like, you're just inviting them. And then like that whole crew is coming, they're all coming solo. And like, you know, they're all friends with each other and they're all going to have a good time and that's going to be great. You don't need to spend all that extra money for all of them to invite a rando to your wedding. Yeah. Which is why I think normally requesting a plus one is, is out of bounds. But I think in the situation where you are seriously with someone and it does seem like an oversight, it's okay to do. So 60% of people say requesting a plus one to a wedding is, not of course, because cool. there's a bunch of haters, not good. But I think, <laughs> I, honestly, I think they're right. I do think that the situation I described is somewhat of a unique No, one. I think it's totally fine to ask if my boyfriend can come to your wedding. I think that's totally fine. I'm just offended for you that you didn't get invited. Thank you, JD. Also, what about a, what about a vote of confidence for whoever you're, yeah. you're? You're like it's a year out. You're probably gonna have a boyfriend, Jill. By then, I we all hope. Bring him <laughs> along. Bring well, along your yeah. future boyfriend. <laughs> See, you're saying that she's not even with someone yet. You're just forecasting. Still, yeah, p- plus one. Yes. Also, <sighs> that was a save the date. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But then, so then they said. So then they said, oh, yeah, we're not sending out formal invitations anyways. I have a lot of friends recently, and we need, we'll go on, but that are just doing, like, the email wedding invitation, which I yes. love. You love an evite? I, I don't care. I'm just saying I love because it's <laughs> You like, went from love to don't care. Well, let me tell you. Like I just mean I support. Yeah. Yeah, you support, support the thriftiness. Like, I support people and, and, like, not wasting, and who fucking cares, and we're all going to throw it out anyway, and no one's mm. putting it on the fridge anymore, and it's like, what are we doing? So it's like, fine, but I was going to say the flip side of that is, like, I lose emails all the time. Mm. Uh, like the invitation to this podcast, That's correct. <laughs> like, I read something and I go, ooh, that sounds really fun, and then if I don't flag it or, or completely open it into another window on my computer, game over. What about all the calligraphers out there? Well, I, isn't it funny that even when I was a kid, again, in the 90s, all invitations, it seemed, to weddings, or most of them were, like, hand yes. calligraphed? I, is that the word? I guess. Wow. Calligraphy, yeah, whatever it's called. Whatever it's called. I mean, or especially at least, like, writing the name on the outside of the envelope, yeah. the thing right. that you're going to rip open and throw immediately. <laughs> I mean, there's a chance you'll keep the card. There's zero chance you're keeping the envelope. Yeah. Zero. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know. Are all calligraphers out of work? I guess. I don't know. They're just doing diplomas. Also, I think they probably have been regardless of the Evite because you can get all that shit printed in beautiful calligraphy now. Yeah. It's the machines they're taking over. The robots have been doing it anyway. All right. Next. Next, we've got some more topics to get to, Jackie. We'll explore them now in our gently paced speed round we call the chaotic good. Okay, Andrew T. asks, stealing toiletries from a hotel, is this good? Well, what do you mean stealing? They're to be taken. Mm, I wouldn't say they're to be taken. I would say they're to be used by the guest in the confines of the room. I don't, I don't think they're meant to be taken. I don't think they're a gift for you. Wait, what? what? Are you talking about the little bottles of shampoo? Of course they're a voice? gift yeah. to you. Yeah, you take them. That's literally what they are. And when you're there, and generally they suck anyway, and you put the lotion on your legs and you're like, was that just water? My legs are drier. (laughs) How did my legs get drier from this fucking lotion? But okay. And then the the shampoo is also body wash. No, it isn't. And so it's just the whole, nobody wants these. But if you are one of the fancies who's staying at the Waldorf Astoria, does that still exist? Sure, you steal. You big time steal. Next. (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, how far does your thievery go? You get in, are you taking the robe? No, Is that a no, gift no, for you? No, 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 I'm only taking the products. Not only am I taking the products, I'm pretending I'm using more than I'm using. So I'm taking the good, that okay. good, I'm taking that good, good off the thing. I'm putting mm. it in my case and then I'm calling the front desk and I'm going, I'm at a loche. <laughs> 
It would be more likely a man would run out of lotion in a hotel yeah. than a woman. No, I have a dry body, and I, I yeah, sure, I don't have a dick shaft to stroke, but I've got yeah. nice long legs and arms that I like to moisturize. I would say for men, it's it's more embarrassing to ask for more lotion. Yeah, that's true. They, they know they know you're using your body. Have you, you ever seen the move where someone will take it like you'll have the lotion and it'll be mostly gone, and it's in you know a clear package, and then you shake it up so that the lotion goes up the side of the wall. Oh, sure, so it looks full. Sure. Yeah. I wonder if the people- that's what they call a life hack. I wonder if the people, thanks BuzzFeed, I wonder if the people in housekeeping <laughs> do that so they make the lotions that's used look not used. But no, but while you're there, <laughs> that's it's interesting. But then while you're there, it's going to sort of sink down the walls and you're going to know you got a halfy. Maybe yeah. they're putting water in your moisturizer. That's why it feels like water. They're just they must, watering it down, shaking it, it up. Yeah. I mean, nine times out of 10, it's like you're better off with nothing than putting that on your skin. Why do they think people – so you're saying everyone's stealing the toiletries. Why do they think people are stealing the hangers? Because you know how some places have the, the dual hanging system where there's a ring around the bar and then there's a separate – Yeah, and it has like a dot at the tab top. on it? Has anyone – have you ever stolen a hanger from a I've a hotel never room? stolen – not on purpose, no. Like I'm thinking if I ever – hung my coat and was like, oh, it'll be easier to put it in the car on a hanger on the thing. But like, no, I can't think of a time I, I'm not a big stealing person, but I think if something it's like, it's fun. I'm not interesting. I'm not a big stealing person, but I love something for free. And so it's like, I'm staying at the hotel. I'm already paying however many hundred dollars a night and all. And what I'm getting out of the deal is like a couple extra lotions. Fuck it. Yeah. They could at least throw in some keels or something. You see what I'm saying? Get that, get that water lotion. One time, I'm ashamed to say this. I stole um, the hair dryer from the Indigo Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> but hear me out. Hear me out. I didn't steal it so much as replace it with my own hair dryer. Oh, so you swapped it out. I swapped it out. Wow. Traveling across country, I had like one of those mini uh, hair dryers named after my favorite Nicolas Cage movie, Con Air. And <laughs> at the hotel, they had a very similar Con Air, but it was better. Hmm. And I, I love this. Um, I just was like, they're not gonna know. And I just replaced my functional Con Air with their slightly better Con Air. Wow, a trade that they didn't consent to, but a trade nonetheless. A, a trade move. nonetheless, and a trade that no one ever clocked and was totally fine. And whoever used that room, whoever had stayed in that room, used that hair dryer and was fine. That's exactly right, JD. See where are you on this one? Steal away. Oh, steal. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Right. I think I think it's even my own. My only note is I don't think it's stealing. Okay. Yeah. Phrasing. We'll work on the phrasing. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll do one more here. Michael R asks, and I'm actually super curious uh, about this one for you, Jackie, because you do play guitar. Bringing a guitar to a party is this good? Nope. No. Nope. It's it's. it's Have like you it, done it though? Uh, by request. Okay. If someone like, if I'm coming somewhere and someone's like, bring your guitar, I'm like, okay. And a lot of the time I still don't, but it hasn't happened in a minute. But I think if you're going to someone's house and they have a guitar and people are playing and it's a, and it's a vibe and it's cool, but like, you don't want to be the guy in the corner of the room in the beanie playing Dave Matthews. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> so it's like, we, if that's the vibe and someone has a guitar, cool, but to bring one, Oh my! It, it, it's ma it makes me cringe. It's total cringe. It is cringe. cringe. JD, you play. You don't play guitar. You play drums. I remember when we were in college, we were at a party where people were playing instruments, and there was a drum set. Mm. And I was like, JD, why, why don't you go uh, <laughs> bash the skins, as they say? And uh, and you were like, absolutely not. I yeah. will never do that. I will not touch that thing at a party. Right. It's disgusting. Yeah. I was disgusted, and actually, my my stance on this has softened over the years. But yeah, it's so cringe to if somebody was to bring a guitar. To, we were at a party once, and this guy brought a djembe. He was like, "Hey, I brought my djembe. If anybody I'm, wants to I'm sing so, some songs, I'm so much more embarrassed by a djembe than a guitar. Right? Because <laughs> a guitar, you can like pretend you had in your car. The only times I've brought a guitar somewhere was when I genuinely like either came from a show or something, and my guitar is like one of the nicer things I own. And it's like I'm not leaving this in the car. Yeah. So I've like had it on my back and looked like the dick that rolled up to the place <laughs> with a guitar. But I promptly like put it in a closet and was like, I just can't leave this in the car. That's but a great I'm move, though, if djembe? you want to be that guy. Like, yeah, well, I can't leave name. it in the guitar. I, I can't leave it in the car. It's so expensive. Oh, let's right. see it. 
oh, play us something. But <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't yeah. play it. Yeah, but but Jagged will work perfect for you. So because while you got the guitar at the party and you're playing ants marching, you you're gonna want the djembe there to back you I up. I mean, I'm so a djembe of all things. What about a cajon? Someone brings in a box drum and they're like, oh, I shouldn't have Ooh. had enough seats. You're like, okay, there, Tiger. <laughs> Fucking, it's so embarrassing. Even it a cajon is. and a djembe, even even when used for their proper purposes, I am a little embarrassed for. Should I say that? Is that okay? Uh, no, that's I totally think that's fine. totally I okay. I mean, that's it's a very muffety... You do like the fingers. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, 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 okay. Oh, I'm you fair. mean that thing that literally everybody can do? <laughs> yes. right. It's like someone with an aux that won't give up the aux cord. Like you're basically at their mercy. That's so um, funny. And I, I was just actually, I was at a wedding a week ago and there was the wedding reception. Then there was an after party. Then after after party. Was your girlfriend they, invited? She was invited because my friends are normal people. Right. Okay. Fair. Okay. Fair. Okay. Fair. <laughs> and uh, the after after party, we ended up at the couple's uh, home. The, the wedding was in a pretty small town, maybe like 12 of us there. And I saw it. A guy brought a guitar and I was like, please don't play it. Please don't play it. Please don't play it. But then at the same time, Jackie, Maybe you can relate. There was a voice in my head being like, like I was like jonesing. Like it was a guy that was hogging the joint. I was like, give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> I can get this fucking party started. Give me 30 seconds. I'll have everyone belting out the chorus under the bridge. Yeah, this guy's I not, mean, even do, he's not, not even doing anything with it. I, you just reminded me, Matt. Uh, we were on a streetcar once, you and I, and a guy who started playing a guitar on a crowded streetcar, Jackie, under the bridge. And I was mortified for him, for everybody on the streetcar. And what does Matt do? He starts singing along. Starts oh, singing I, along. What? This you doesn't sing. sound like me. You, well, I know. Maybe I, know. I was. That was almost the end of our friendship. This was still when we were in university. But I was like, I can't oh believe that I would do that. God, but then, it, but then you realized instead of it being the end, it was actually just building an even stronger foundation. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. took out a djembe. <laughs> exactly. So don't don't do this. Honestly, even around a campfire now, I'm like. I find it no, it's too can't, imposing. No, no, no. Campfire, I'm absolutely I'm back on board. Campfire, I'm back on board. Every campfire I've been to recently, people just want to chat. They don't want to pause the chatting so you can play that satellite. That is the thing. That is the thing. I think music is pretty much only welcome, like, if someone it's a, recommend, like, someone asks you, requests. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. okay, great. Okay, well, don't bring a guitar to a party. Just... Jesus, for the love of God, don't don't ruin things for everyone. All right, Jack, it's time for our final segment. It's time for subjective trivia. Subjective trivia. It's just like regular trivia, except only I know the answer. So we start off the show talking about um uh, american idol Oof, uh, and so we're gonna end up talking about american idol the question is who is the best american idol winner i have my answer written on this card so you know i'm not cheating and so you're trying to get your answer to match with mine you can consult with jd you can discuss who's the best american idol winner okay well let me go through the winners because i don't really know well we don't I... need to go through all 23 seasons oh my god i didn't know there were more than like eight Oh. Um, <laughs> Weren't you on season nine? Okay, no, she nine, was on eight. <laughs> okay, nine. It, it, Ten? I mean, 23? I genuinely did not know that. Okay, um, well, what, are the, what are the big names that, that come to mind? Ruben Studdard. Mm hmm. Fantasia. Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. Okay. Fantasia. Did Clay Aiken win his season? No, he was, he came in no, second. No, behind uh, Ruben. To Ruben. Yeah. And Adam Lambert also didn't win because Chris Allen won my year. Oh, oh Phil right. Phillips has got to be one of the best winners. Oh, then there was Lee Duwais. Uh, Never heard of that person, so what, I'm going to tell you now it's not that person. What about uh, Chris Taylor Daughtry? Hicks, didn't he win? What? Taylor Taylor Hicks won, yeah. But, I would say oh, Carrie one... Underwood? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah that's one. the one I was waiting for you to say. Maybe that may be the answer. All right, so who do you think it is, Jay? Who's the best? And you know, it's, it's what do you think the criteria are? I think it's pretty clear that this is the best American Idol winner. I I think it's definitely between Kelly Clarkson and Carrie Underwood. Okay. Like the people that have done the most with it have the absolute undeniably best voices. Like anytime Carrie Underwood or Kelly Clarkson would have been on a singing competition in the last 20 years, they would have massacred it. Yeah. Like okay, there so really are special talents. Mm -hmm. um, 
Whereas, like, I think about all the other one, a lot of the other ones, and they've, you know, it's very, it's a hard business to have longevity in. I think Kelly Clarkson. Okay, mm. JD, are you going to uh, agree, Jackie? Do you have any counsel for her? Well, I agree that it's one of those two. Uh, and knowing Matt, I mean, I think that it's Kelly Clarkson. She, I love Kelly Clarkson. She, I, she can do no wrong in my book. Uh, but I also love Carrie Underwood. Me too. But and Matt is on a huge country kick mm, right now. That's true. That's true. Also, so, he did like a whole diatribe about like, oh, I was waiting for you to say Carrie Underwood, and that yeah, could be the answer. Yeah. But mm. I feel like when he said, and that could be the answer, that was a misdirect, and it's not the answer. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. All right. Well, now you're playing the game. <laughs> well, okay, Matt. Let's go. Let's go, Kelly. Let's go, Kelly Clarkson. Kelly is Clarkson. That, final you, answer. You go with Jackie? That, Jackie. Yep. Okay. Kelly JD, get that gliss ready. It's Kelly yeah. Clarkson. I did it. You did it. Obviously, it's Kelly Clarkson. The conversation starts and ends with "Since You've Been Gone." I mean. It is one of the best pop songs, uh, whatever you want to say, the last twenty years, thirty years, and I have no evidence to support this, and I did not look it up. But to me, it feels like the la- one of the last songs sung by a pop star. That is a pop song that is like guitar rock bass, like and and like with a distorted yep. guitar on it and like an anthemic chorus. And I, I miss having those. I mean, sure, it's like all the pop songs now that are basically based in electronic music or hip hop are fine, but I miss I miss the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. So for me Oh, Daughtry. It's Kelly. That's another winner. That Daughtry. Yeah. Or no, maybe he didn't win, he came in like fifth. I don't know. Oh, I'll, no. I'll tell you one thing, Jackie. You invite Philip Phillips over to your house. He's bringing that guitar bringing and he's guitar. playing. I'll tell Dave you Matthews. something. I invite that. He is so talented. Oh, you're a big, you're a big Phillips. No, fan. I, I, I wouldn't. Other than the the one hit, I, I wouldn't know his songs. But he, he's talented. I think he was playing somewhere. I was at like a benefit or something, and he played, and I was like, oh damn, he's so legit, and he's such a good looking kid. Um, you know what? You just inspired me to do something we've never done before on the show, Jackie. I have another subjective trivia question for you because now I'm curious. What's the best Dave Matthews song? Oh, I don't listen to Dave Matthews. Crash into me. Okay, no. Oh, well, it's quick. The answer is number forty-one. Okay. What is that? It's a hard one. That's a song. Uh, all right. If you have, I've never it's heard it. Me. That was a great, a great ending. Um, if you have topics, tweet them to me at Starters Matt or email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Jackie, where can people find you? Oh, me. Find me on Instagram at Jackie Tone. Jackie T-O-H-N. Just find me on Instagram and you can hear, uh, find out all the fun things I'm up to and all the Jewish ornaments I get for my Christmas tree. Oh, you're okay. Nice. Nice <laughs> cross promotion. Quit, That's not the word quiz. I'm looking for. Um, thanks for listening. Jackie, thank you so much for coming. For everyone, I'm Matt Austin, and this was good. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone! Bye.